Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David and in today's video, I'm actually incorporating the older video that I've actually posted earlier in October 2020, which I had to take down because of some, some copyright issues due to the fact that I've actually used some music as a background for my vocals in my narratives. Hence, there is no way of editing it and the whole thing is a bit ugly. So I've taken it down and but for the visual display for a uh, factor of resp uh, reference and I find that this is a good chance good time for me to make a before and after video of approximately two years from now of what are the plants that actually survive in my garden and the ones that are actually doing so well and it is quite the big deal because in a way I've noticed that nothing much actually has changed and I'm surprised that these plants are quite hardy even though two years has passed by they appears to be thriving in this kind of garden condition so uh, on the context of introduction I just want to introduce few factors here when it comes to my gardening style so first thing first is that I have already incorporated all of their names in my description uh, box below. Also some of their names are also incorporated as labels on the video. So you may actually know their IDs as you can visually see their plants and their care. And one of the things that actually really help is that when it comes to my garden condition where it's very much tropical and the factor of uh, rain and sun which is very unpredictable because there are days that is raining almost every day and there are days that is very dry and it's very unpredictable because there's a true spectrums of too hot and too wet and somehow I find that in between in this context uh, these plants are able to handle that kind of condition which I consider them as hardy plants few things to note when it comes to my gardening style are these are actually planted using hanging basket and the best of the mediums that I actually find over the years is more on the trial and error factor and I find that using coconut chips mixed with sand seems to do very well in my garden condition these receive somehow about two to three hours of uh, bright morning or evening sun depending on the time of the year and occasionally a lot of uh, rainwater do come upon them uh, but because of a small opening the amount of water is not very heavy however because of the mediums that I use for my planting is fast draining so they are not very much affected but somehow they do drain out very fast and so keeping all the plants healthy seems to be the best condition for them. Now coming back to a factor of pros and cons on this style of gardening where I've planted a lot of uh, specimens here where they are tightly knitted together and they all are at least you can say easily about 300 over plants growing in this kind of condition and so I just like to talk about the, uh, the pros and cons on this and coming back to uh, pros I find that this idea of gardening is known as biodiversity gardening so there's a lot of study that has been ongoing in certain researches that has been done and the plus point about bios biodiversity is that uh, the plants do somehow communicate together with their root ball hence they actually exchange nutrients and even uh, mycorrhiza uh, fungus fungus in a way that they are incorporating each other to help each other for better strengthening the plant body in this way i find that they do very well when it comes to pest control and one of the things that i really notice is that because of this style of gardening i rarely use pesticide oh, and of course occasionally i find one or two plants do have some infection but it is not so drastic in a way that i have to spray 
spray all the pesticide uh, for the whole garden and i find that it is very good because no matter what pesticide somehow is a question where it may not be very effective and if it's very effective it has to be extremely poisonous even for the humankind so in a way to avoid unnecessary problems i do not grow very sensitive plants because if they do require pesticide as their normal regime in, in their gardening condition i will avoid it because uh, in a way it is just not going to be worth it to grow something that is going to harm uh, <laughs> people who are staying in the house and now another factor about uh, when it comes to plus point on biodiversity gardening is that very much earlier I actually planted a lot of orchids in my garden and it was that season of time where I actually was very much of the orchid collector and I find that it was extremely challenging when it comes to pests especially when it comes to say scale insect and spider mites it seems to be so difficult to eradicate them from the garden and due to the factor that because everything is orchids and so the infection was very widespread that it's not easy to be controlled because somehow uh, one tiny insect just hides somewhere and they just come back within three months time so when it comes to this kind of gardening style is that because they are so many variation and varieties are incorporated together somehow i find that the spread of these uh, pests will be very much on the context of limitation so they can't really travel far and uh, due to the watering and the condition and so it was very much controlled and i find that this actually helped the plants to grow and thrive in this kind of context Another factor that I would like to talk about is Kokodama balls. I also find that they are very temporary. They don't seem to last more than many years and they seem to fall apart as a lot of things start to rot and uh, it's not really a permanent type of thing that can last for years. So in here what you actually see in this garden, those that actually grow two years ago, a lot of the Kokodama balls didn't uh, stay in their ball shape for two years time hence i've actually removed all of them and just placed them in a plastic hanging pots and they are doing fine another factor that i want to talk about is the hooprisia species who were quite challenging at first when i find that when they are planted upright in a hanging pot so i have to repot them back to upside down condition the ones that you actually see here in the october 2020 a lot of it actually have died and gone so the new collection that i've recently purchased because the price crash is quite affordable so i've reintroduced them back into my collection and they are doing very fine so one thing that you have to take note is to plant them upside down for their hardiness and and this kind of condition actually helps them to thrive because uh, in my garden condition this seems to be a little bit difficult when they are grown in the upright condition now when it comes to the not so good points is that i always have the challenge where the plants tend to grow uh, leggy and messy and the ones that intended to really grow well doesn't really grow well so they were sort of like uh, stunted and some of them actually died and those that really did not make it are the orchids so i find that orchids do not do well when it comes to bios uh, diversity gardening except for the ones that are hardy so uh, i have already lost a lot of them in the two years time hence i'm not actually pursuing in purchasing them anymore and just keeping up with the wolves uh, species and specimen that does well and also increase in the collection of those that does well in my garden so in this way i will know in the con in the concept of selection of uh, the best plants that do well in my garden space so in that kind of thing orchids seems to be a cross off in my garden because i find that they are too sensitive and the one that really look good doesn't really bloom and the one that i actually have are uh, hardy so in a way this is is the type and my style of gardening which i find that works best 
also do take note that i've actually uh, made individual videos uh, concerning their plant care and detailed information on how i care for them in my garden so this is very much on the context of what goes very well as a community plant so that you can have a visual uh, display and view on these plants to see how well they grow in my garden condition and sort of like my plant journal to actually observe and see what do best and what don't in my garden condition another point that i really like to share is that a huge mistake and a horrible lesson that i've learned is not to constantly miss uh, mix and match different types of fertilizer within a week's time what i have done is the mistake of uh, over fertilizing them using so many different varieties of fertilizer upon the plants just to care for them ending up that the plants have already fall succumbed to stress and uh, the one that really paid a high price were the orchids where they have actually rotten away followed by some bromelets too so in a way that i've actually found found that many of the plants don't really do well with over fertilizing especially the cascading types so this is one of the lessons that i would like to share with you when it comes to biodiversity gardening so these are the collection of the cascading plants that actually uh, grown very well and survived through from october 2020 so uh fast forwarding this particular collection you will actually see the next collection that is currently available in my hands after two years plus in my garden space another thing that you actually have to take note of is that most of these plants here are actually more of the leafy type and not the flowering type so this is one of the things that i want to grow and cultivate is to give the type of visuals that they are very much unique type of plants and some of them actually grow upright which i have actually hanged them upside down just to give that kind of visual display coming back to the current condition based on what are the collection that is available currently and you can see this is my Hooperizia collection which i've managed to cultivate currently i'm actually having three collect three types of hoopresia this particular one is very new in the market uh, known as uh, sp hang hong i believe this is a new hybrid and i find it's quite uh, hardy and this fairly doing very well i was afraid that it might disintegrate and fall apart but in comparison to the sensitive types this seems to do well and i have actually reverted and replanted this particular one upside down back again i can you can actually notice a new shoot is forming uh, very fast and quickly and i find that uh, it's a big deal for me because i knowing that this particular plant is actually a, a very slow growing plant and somehow it has stabilized so uh, just to give a quick note there are detailed information which i have actually uh, explained a lot to do with hooperizia in my playlist do check it out and you can know and more explain details that i've actually have uh, made videos on that over here i've actually layered it in a pot hoping that there will be new plants coming off from it because when it comes to propagation they are actually more uh, viable and easily able to grow by the tips of the plant now this particular one you can see it's actually the medium potting medium here is basically coconut chips a little bit of uh, sphagnum moss and i've actually placed the plant upside down and actually doing fairly well i've actually purchased it about a month ago i split the plant into two just in case i will have some spare in case one plant won't do well and the new growth is appearing to be strong and sturdy so coming back to square i think this particular name is of that kind seems to be uh, doing fairly well uh, even though that when it comes to a report they tend to struggle and acclimatize and in cases that one or two strands may turn yellow or wither away or dry up but so far it's doing fine so i believe that once they are okay and stable and look a bit uh, robust i believe that the plant is actually happy 
just to explain to you that I actually carefully separated two sets of plants out from the root ball one from the one that you saw earlier and this is a secondary one I have not uh, individually removed the root ball because if I were to do so I might actually easily damage the root ball and I don't want to do so because these are sensitive plants but however they are doing fine with the two separation from it and I have carefully divided it and and cut the bottom part of the drainage hole and place carefully if you can see over here actually cut the pot into half and tape it back because I don't want to fight and force my way through by forcing the root ball into the drainage hole and might damage the whole thing but so far it's doing fine so this is my technique uh, this particular one is about one to two months old and it's okay only one strand didn't make it but overall i find that it's it's good so these are the things that i've i keep an eye and watch out for that they do need a little bit of uh, bright light and also fast training medium which i actually use coconut chips for it coming back to my cascading plants collection number two are uh, my ferns collection which i find that they are fairly doing well and coming to know when it comes to maiden hair ferns they are super sensitive plant and very easy to dye and it was quite challenging for me and i really love these particular ferns and i have managed to cultivate them in my garden together here you can also see another collection of stack conference and uh, there's another one actually growing from the drainage hole this particular one is also a little bit challenging but somehow with trial and error i managed to cultivate it a lot of it also in my detailed video in my earlier care and cultivation videos in my earlier uh, you can actually find them in my playlist but over here you can see that these are the ones that i'm actually growing as uh, cascading plants and here i want to showcase to you the ferns collection do note that not every single fern that made it this is another type it is a bigger leaf type of this maiden hair fern they do need sunlight but somehow they are acclimatizing to the weather here and a lot of it is not really making through and so this is one of the things that i have to face in my experiments with ferns this is another one something similar like boston fern uh, but i'm not really sure of the exact species name somehow i find that this one is hardy and able to weather the storm when it comes to my gardening condition uh, they don't really need extra thick uh, root ball kind of effect so a small hanging pot will do and i find that they do give a very nice beautiful features uh, this is a fluffy ruffle fern which i still love it because it does have that kind of fuzzy kind of effect on the leaves is a different type of ferns which i also cultivate followed by this particular one i will also place their names you can actually see that in the screen but however i just want to show to you the collections of all the ferns that made it in my garden condition now the beauty effect of the ferns is that they are very much fall into the secondary type of plants where i've just planted them in no crook and corner of my pots hanging pots because i find that they don't really need so much of space for it so i just have to pull out a small root ball and i just have to tuck it in into a pot and they just do fine uh, however there are some of the types that are a little bit invasive and this fall into that category because uh, they can appear to be very leggy and unruly and hence at times i will constantly prune them off because they just go too much and appears to be very much invasive so just for this purpose of the video i'm just showing to you which which is actually growing here and uh, so this is the culprit the the supposed uh, trailing root ball somehow you just train out these uh, roots and is actually seeking out for a new place for it to trail and grow so normally i just train trim off these pieces off so that it will not uh invade other pots and then it can be very unruly there was once a case where this whole root ball of this fern have actually sort of conquered the whole thing and i've just 
tug and pull out everything out and uh, they can be a little bit of a parasite kind of an effect so do watch out for that not all boston ferns do very well as combo plant but I, anyway i still love that kind of this big leaf palm leaf kind of effect so that's why i'm cultivating them in my garden space now coming back to number three i will actually identify them as succulents and cacti collection i must tell you that there is, this is not exhaustive you can constantly collect and there is no end to it and the ones that i'm actually collecting are the cascading type do take note there are some cactus that do not cat uh, do not cascade and some of them actually grow upright but these ones that i'm actually interested in are the one that cascade downwards so in a way we can notice that they are more likely that fall down gracefully without any much of support and do take note when it comes to succulent they are very sensitive so these fall into the category of touch me not plants because if they are very much brushed or handled roughly the supposed leaf will actually fall apart so they are sensitive in that context so as i mentioned they are more of c see no touch plant kind of context i'm actually refraining uh, myself from putting up each individual species name because they are quite tedious and they are very much fall on a broader spectrum of many unique names however these just i find that in a visual display they are looking very beautiful and i have been cultivating them for many years so these are not the ones that is just recently introduced falling into the category of succulents these are rip salis and i also managed to grow a few of the different types of rip salis however i find that there are so many and some of them are actually sensitive so it's a little bit difficult followed by some of the cactus and succulents that i have actually introduced here in my garden collection one tip here that i would like to ex mention here is that once the potting medium has been established where the plant is happy with it uh, they can be acclimatized in such a way that they will not rot and fall apart like more succulent plants and this seems to be fine now this is actually the sun severe but actually right now it's already been recategorized to another name however i'm just using the older name here and i find that this particular one is actually more of the upright growing type but i have actually planting planted them in a, in upside down manner of uh, growing it in a uh, hanging pot and however some of the portion of the plant revert itself to growing and upward but some of them seems to grow sideways however i just like the way of the visual that is been growing here more like a claw kind of a thing something like from a science fiction movies an alien kind of thing so these are the things that actually interest me a lot coming next on the collection is known as the ffilm uh, species commonly known as queen of the night this particular one i'm actually growing for the leafy structure where they are cascading down i have been having a quite sort of a challenge here because they rarely bloom in my garden condition however i'm just happy with the way the plants are actually appearing in a way i can say it also seems to be a little bit sensitive type some of them are doing fairly well growing very nicely but there are some that actually have stunted its growth and it just remain as it is so i believe there are many different varieties of this kind uh, the one that actually does well in the garden conditions is some are actually very limited so this particular one seems to appear to be very much like a broad leaf and cascading downwards there are also the radar versions and also the curly versions uh, they don't grow very fast so you have to take note of it that there are uh, types and species no matter the the ones that appears to be uh, very unique seems to 
be a very slow growing type if you notice this particular one i think many have keeping in more than two years plus from the earlier video notice it has not grown it's just remained to be in that kind of site and some of it actually rotten away so that's the setbacks of certain types of this particular type of plants this is a different one i believe this particular one has a lot of white flowers the smaller version but as you can notice over here it is just all leaves and nothing much to shout about but however i just love the way that it appears to be perhaps another few years time or maybe i crack the goal of finding out the best solution for it where it can actually grow prophylically now if you notice this is known as fish tail cactus is also fall in the same category uh, this is another zigzag kind of a leaf structure which is unique do take note that it does have some sharp needle like structure at the end of the leaf i don't know whether you can actually notice it in this video here uh, so these are the things that some things are hidden when it comes to this cacti kind of thing so handle them with care you don't want to get this needle like tons poke you while you're handling them i this is one of my last of my kokodama balls which i actually rolled it around they don't seem to do so well in the propagation kind of thing so once the mature leaf grows up they tend to become small if they are snapped and replanted back and next in the collection is known as decidia species this is supposedly supp be known as the cousins of hoya and i find that they seems to be far more resilient and hardy in comparison to the hoya species however do take note that not all decidias are actually hardy now these particular ones are very much like the cascading types and i find that the one that i have here the thing is known as the decidia ionita there are two types that i'm actually having is the variegated type and the non-variegated type and some of a little bit of this and that uh, however i have some challenges that the ones that are non-hardy the sensitive front once i've actually lost and died from my collection and i'm not actually pursuing to purchase and find them and grow them because lack of space and they may need a lot of care and there's something which i really don't have and i'm actually looking forward for the ones that can actually do so well with minimum care like this particular one this is a green version and it's just growing widely and actually they do not have any central part where they're actually growing on a pot rather they are just cascading down from the top to bottom and they're just doing fine so all i have to take care is just watering them and sometimes they just get rain water for them to grow so these are the types that i actually love to grow where minimum care and and just grow beautifully next in the collection is hoya species these are actually cultivated more for the beauty of their leaves and also the flowers and actually the flowers are quite amazing they have this pendant like a kind of a bunch and even their fragrance and the colors are quite amazing however in my garden condition i did not sure what exactly is the problem but none of them actually has bloomed for over the years now the other factor here is that let's say they don't really bloom they do also have the beauty where the leaves are very unique and actually hardy and this particular one i think is known as hoya curry more on the hard leaf shaped kind of leaves and this is what i'm actually considering as a unique and exotic kind of look in my garden space i have chance upon to find one dried up leaf over here in coming to know about hoya their leaves are very hardy and they can actually last for many months so i believe that this is one of the things about hoya that if they are not really thriving and doing so well they are more on a surviving zone but however i'm okay with it because uh, i don't want to overwater it and get them rotting because i actually lost one collection thus where it's actually rotten away because too much water was actually was sitting on the root ball so this is one of the things when it comes to hoya you have to get the right balance of watering and medium and sunlight and all that and this is the problem with hoya so 
I'm just having what I'm actually collecting right now. I'm not pursuing to get more of these types in my garden space. I find that Hoya seems to be a sensitive plant and not fairly doing well. Unless I get some free plants or gifting when it comes to Hoya. But other than that, I'm not purchasing them. It's especially when it comes to this kind of types of uh, Hoya plants. They can be very expensive. Also, I find that they don't fare well when it comes to over uh, fertilizer overfeeding. They can rot easily. Another factor about Hoyas, these are sun lovers, lacking which they don't really do so well. Now, coming to the next collection is my bromelid species. And I also find that they are doing fine and okay in my garden set. Uh, these are just the ones that are actually on the hanging pots, on facing on the against the awning here and there are others that is actually i find that facing as the ones that has been grown on the vertical wall seems to do fairly well but also i've noticed that some particular types the especially the very colored ones don't do very well i think i've lost a lot on a trial and error i think these are the ones that actually survive in my garden space there are the ones that i find that the small colored ones norgelia species this is the the tricolor and this is a da two types is a fireball if i'm not wrong they don't really turn into red they are very much in a green tones so i believe that this is all because of lack of sunlight next in my collection are the air plants collection again similar like the bromelets some really do very well and some just don't fare well uh, again there are may they in the context of many trials and error actually have lost a lot of this particular air plants uh, one of the challenges that i face is that when something goes wrong the whole thing rots i can just touch the whole thing and it just collapse and fall apart though there are certain parts of the leaves appear to be very green and okay but if if they are mishandled not say mishandled if they rot the whole thing just collapse so there's nothing much you can actually repair and help them and i think one of the culprits is actually the wrong fertilizer that i've actually applied especially if i'm not wrong is the wood vinegar it sort of like cause a lot of rot upon the leaves and also i find that mix and matching with other different types of fertilizer seems to kill them and actually i lost a lot of species so on the safe side i'm just actually handling it just spray water on it and occasionally if at all there's some of the npk foliar fertilizer get upon them i just leave it as this but i really do not uh, focus on actually applying any fertilizer on him because i think i learned a lot of lessons of just constantly Constantly killing them because of the issues of overfeeding them so this is one of the things that I've actually learned and once I got that right and I've just managed to get some of the newer ones I think few months ago uh, and and I find that they are doing fairly well of course there are the bigger ones are here in me for many years i'm just leaving it as such because i find that they can be very finicky and they just uh, love to be not to be disturbed so these are uh, touch me not disturb me not kind of plant and i find that this seems to do fairly well if their conditions are met properly in a way to say that they have a greasy bright indirect light and enough watering and that's the best they are for for the moment so i find that once they're happy i just leave them as as they are next on the list are these pitcher plants the snapsilis species and i find that this is fairly new actually i reached, uh, got it somewhere around october november and i find that they are actually doing very well uh, the there is a setback here is that not to give them too much fertilizer on them so i am very cautious of not spraying any fertilizer because if i were to do so and those pictures may just go disappearing so this is one of the setbacks when it comes to carnivorous plants is the application of fertilizer on them can be detrimental when you want the results where you want the pictures to be there for visual display i've actually missed out this particular type of ferns this is a bit of the trailing type but it's actually fall into this maiden hair kind of a 
plant these ferns and i find it is quite interesting because it was actually introduced one time ago in one of uh, in the nurseries and in the market but it has slowly been taken out and i think the one that i'm actually having in a collection is one of the types that is not reintroduced back in the market so i find that sometimes you can actually find them and and they will not be introduced so it's one of the rare occasions and finally the one that really didn't do so well is my orchid collection if you won't believe it this is actually the vanilla the famous vanilla plant uh fell sadly to say that this will not uh bear flowers because this uh, and even if they were to do so they will not actually bear the seed pot because this requires uh, the pollinators which I do not actually have that in my garden hence a lot of it is actually done uh, manually or hand pollinated which there is a kind of thing that need to be done and the right conditions are not met here in my garden space however I just like the cascading effect of how it appears to be something like a golden photos of philodendron species somehow i find that this particular orchid seems to show that kind of uh, features in the uh, leafy display or the the and i find that it's quite interesting and they actually grow very well and appearing to be like the cascading effect this particular one does give that kind of features i do have some of the orchids that's grown in my garden but they are not really doing so well i'm just keeping them because i don't think so i want to discard them and i just want to see how they fare in a long term in my garden but the ones that actually died and withered away i'm actually not going to plan to replace them or buy them from a nursery i just leave it as it is and i find that in, in the context of cascading plants orchids don't seem to do fare well in my current condition so i finally come to the conclusion of my whole collection here as you can notice here the full view of everything that is been hanged and in a flower in the hanging baskets and some of it is just hoisted properly in a way that is overlapping each other it is quite a mess if i were to mention to you but in my context i just want to uh, have a beauty where everything is actually grown properly together in a kind of a manner that it gives a graceful effect where everything is grown in complementing each other in a maximum space factor so especially when it comes to lack of space i find that doing in this kind of method seems to do so well of course i wish i had more space where i actually can cascade and grow more of this in my garden but truth be told that this is what i have in my garden space hence the best i can make do and i find that when growing them in long term kind of factor which is what i'm actually planning to do so because i don't want to constantly buy and purchase them and then if they were constantly were to die i will take it as such that they are not effectively growing uh, their growing conditions is not met in my garden hence i will skip them from cultivating them in my garden space when it comes to succulents do take note that i also have a uh, at least half or more of this collection grown on my balcony space where i actually control them from overwatering and they are actually faring very well and so this is just the portion that is available on my lower ground floor i hope you actually enjoyed the video here that i have actually showcased here on the context of the element of two years plus three years plus of my garden plants here and if you have any questions do put them in a comment below and i would really appreciate if you can click like and subscribe and support my channel and i would really like to see you again in my next video take care and have a nice day bye